Canon PowerShot SX 520HS, a prosumer compact camera, launched in 2014. It is sold brand new for around 300 US bucks. This one I bought for parts or repair. The LCD lights up, but no information is displayed. Since it appears to still control the lens, I presume the microcontroller is not cactus. The problem might be restricted to the LCD. One thing I noticed is this dirt around the lens. It is inside too, which is not a good omen. Armed with the tools of the trade, let's tear this thing down and see what kind of destiny is set aside for us. Before we begin, let's remove the battery and the SD card. We begin with the two Phillips screws on top of the LCD. Two on the right side, two on the left side. There is one hidden under this protective lid. Two more at the bottom. Spudger, and we are in like Flynn. Holy moly, what's that? How could this dirt end up here? It seems to be all over the place. It is some kind of insect, but I am not sure what it is. I will have to check it out. By their size, shape and color, I would say this is a Monomorium pharaonis also known as pharaoh ant, a worldwide pest. But how did they end up here? There are lots of them. You bet they are shorting out something related to the LCD. Well, if that is the case before anything, we need to dismantle this camera and remove all insectile traces. We need to remove the keypad. Just three Phillips screws. Now we need to be careful on account of this copper tab. Wiggle, 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 and it's loose. But we still have this ZIF connector to unlatch. And bingo. Same thing with the LCD connector. No screws attach the LCD now, so it must get off by gently prying with the spudger. There is a double-sided adhesive tape between the LCD and the chassis. Now we flip up the flash to release the microphone ensemble. This will give us access to two screws that hold the chassis. Six more screws, one at the bottom, careful with the spudger, and the chassis is off. The lens is also loose, but we still need to disconnect its three flat cables. The first one goes off easily. The other two have ZIF connectors. Now we can remove the lens as a whole and surprise, surprise. The situation is much worse than I thought. Ants. Ants everywhere. Many thoughts cross my mind. But I am starting to grasp what might have happened. Instead of the typical smell of electronics, this camera gives off a fruity scent, reminiscent of grape juice. However, what bugs me right now, unintended, is the fact that the lens is affected. I can only hope that this dirt is superficial and that no critical part has been attacked by the empire of the ants. Now let's go for the main board. There is only one screw holding it. These two flat cables must be released and off goes the main board. Next step is to remove this last screw on the bottom. And this top part here goes off graciously like that. Now we need to figure out how to remove these flat cables. Using the spudger I could detach this whole junction from its place. Now we need to remove this screw that holds this capacitor. And we can notice a little bit of tarnish on this copper plate. This might indicate the presence of some kind of liquid inside the camera. We release this retaining clip and voila! Before we go on, however, it is always a good practice to properly discharge the capacitor using an analog meter, or a digital one with a low Z feature. Regular digital meters have a high input impedance and are not suitable for the job. These capacitors can store potentially lethal voltages for days. This one has a safety spacer around it and two convenient holes on the top for easy access with a multimeter probe. The polarity here is indicated on the capacitor housing. Always start with the multimeter set to the highest DC voltage. If there is any charge in the capacitor, the multimeter will show it by indicating its voltage. Adjust the range to the appropriate voltage as it goes down, because on an analog multimeter, the lower the range, the lower the input impedance. Now we need to remove this encoder. Just two screws. And there goes the battery compartment. I removed a screw under the flash, and it goes off that easy. 
Next I removed two screws that held this two tactile switches. So what is left for us to do is to remove this flat cable, which is held in place by some mild adhesive. My suspicions are now confirmed. Under the flash screw there is still some kind of viscous liquid. I am not sure if the camera can show it. I removed two screws and this board is now loose. It contains the high voltage converter. Now we need to inspect these switches. I removed two screws here and, yes, more ants. Here it is the tactile on, off switch. And over there I removed three more screws to inspect the zoom control and shutter release. Well, we have now to finish cleaning up all this mess and I hope we can completely debug this camera. Thanks for watching. Have a good night and stay beautiful.